Hi and welcome to Orbit. One of my first smartphones ever was the OnePlus One and I used every single generation since then. And sadly, they started to disappear in Europe because of a patent war with Nokia. But now they are back. This is the OnePlus 12. I used it and this thing is pretty much perfect. You know what I think is great? The name. It's simply OnePlus 12. No Pro, no Ultra and certainly no Pro Max or 5G. Just simply 12. The design on the other hand, well, it's less simple. There are three colors, black, white and green. The latter looks almost crazy. It's a marble structure with sparkling particles in the camera element and a matte, almost rough coating. It feels more like jewelry than a smartphone. There are so many details and illusions. You think that the camera is protruding, but actually it is flat behind glass. Probably not everyone will like this design, but you don't have to. The OnePlus 12 has the best, yep, the best vibration motor. I can only describe it as three-dimensional, always a reason to be happy when it moves. Unfortunately, the device is not completely waterproof, but splash resistant, and there is a new feature in conjunction with water. You can still use the touchscreen perfectly even when it's wet. That's amazingly practical in everyday life, whether it's after washing your hands or when it's raining. I want that on my smartwatch. And the display in here, you could argue that it is the best right now. A huge 6.8 inch, 1 to 120 Hz, Quad HD Plus resolution, 10 bit color, 2160 Hz dimming, so sensitive eyes won't notice any flickering, and an incredible 4500 nits of maximum brightness. This does only apply to HDR content. In the sun, it can reach 1600 nits, so also quite good. There's just one funny detail. The touchscreen is only 240Hz, but the cheaper OnePlus 12R has 1000Hz, so this reduces latency while gaming. You've probably already noticed that the sides of the display are slightly curved. I do like that, but it's going a bit out of fashion at the moment, and anyone who doesn't like it might be happier with the Google Pixel 8 Pro. In general, the two devices are extremely similar, which is why I keep making comparisons, because I have both of them here. OnePlus devices are known for always having the latest and fastest technology built in and of course it's the same here. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with 16GB of RAM, twice as much as the new MacBook Air with M3 and even 512GB UFS 4.0 memory, also twice as much as the MacBook. And that's why the performance is crazy good. It has happened more than once that I opened an app that I had opened a few days ago and it was exactly where I left it. Nothing jerks, nothing stutters, nothing crashes. It's also fast that it's almost a little bit sad that it's only 120Hz and not 165Hz or more like Motorola is doing it right now because the processor is easily capable. Nonetheless, this is the perfect smartphone for everyone that is impatient. And that has also to do with the software. In multitasking, there is a small row of icons at the bottom and you can scroll through them much faster and more clearly than everywhere else. And although this is not pure Android, and I do usually prefer pure Android, I think that the software here is beautiful to look at and extremely functional. The structure is logical, the icons are beautiful, you can set how dark the dark mode really is, which apps run in 120, 90 or 60 hertz, and you can limit the charging level to 80% and so on. I only have minor problems with the software. First of all, the updates. Only 4 years of Android and 5 years of security updates will be provided. That's probably enough for my kind of usage, but 7 years like Google, Samsung and Apple are doing it is of course better. And OnePlus is not the fastest company when it comes to updates. They are not super slow. I just installed Android 14 on my OnePlus 9, so that's okay. But my OnePlus Open still has Android 13, so I'm a little bit mad. And also the whole service infrastructure is not up yet in Europe. So it's still gone, kind of. So if you have a bigger problem, it may be more difficult to repair this thing than other smartphones. Although the device does not feel thicker than other current smartphones, the battery is quite a bit bigger, 5400 mAh. And you know what? 
I did notice that. On the first day I had around 7 hours of display use and still 26% of battery left. I was almost only at home and at Wi-Fi, but on mixed days I was able to get a screen on time of at least 6 hours. So that's really strong. That's almost twice as long as my Pixel 8 Pro lasts sometimes. And the OnePlus charges faster too. With the included 100 watt power supply you can charge up to 50% in just 12 minutes. And there is wireless charging with 50 watts. You do need a special cooled charger for this, but it goes from 0 to 50 in just 25 minutes. In both cases the device does not get hot, which is good for the battery health. When you ask someone what they think the best camera is, they will probably say the iPhone, a Galaxy or maybe the Google Pixel, but actually I do think that OnePlus now makes the best images. Yeah, I'm not kidding. They spend 150 million to Hasselblad to tweak their colors and I would say it was worth it. The photos are friendly, they are bright and crisp. Colors are vivid but not artificially exaggerated. The dynamic range is very high. That's a look that makes everything look somehow good. The built-in sensor technology is also more modern than in the competition. The 50 megapixel main camera is a Sony LYT808. With dual transistors, it is faster, has less noise and is more sensitive to light. The ultra wide angle and the 3x tele also have above average sensors. They are half an inch in size. So it doesn't matter what focal length you are shooting at, the images do always look clean and true color. There are also a few Hasselblad features, the X-Pen mode or the portrait effect with bokeh meant to look like real Hasselblad lenses. My main smartphone is an OnePlus Open and the camera system is almost the same and I took some awesome pictures and videos with it. So if I had the choice between iPhone 15 Pro, Galaxy S24 Ultra, Pixel 8 Pro and OnePlus 12, I know what I would be going with. If I had to change something in the successor, that would be the telephoto camera. I think 4X would be great and I do want a bigger ultra wide sensor, just like in the OnePlus 9. Conclusion, OnePlus goes a little bit further in almost every respect. A little bit brighter screen, a little bit more performance, a little bit more battery, a little bit more modern sensor technology and it shows because the price is also a little bit lower. It's 950 euros here in Europe. That's not cheap, but it is cheaper than all of the competition and I would say it is better than them. So this is probably right now the best phone and it's a great comeback.